watching Keeping It Green. I'm your host, Debbie Klugers, and today I have the president of the group for the East End, Mr. Bob DeLuca. Hi, great to be here. Thank you for coming, Bob. Sure. Um, you know this is an environmental show. I do. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. And I like to, if I remember to start the show off, I like to do um, an environmental tip or a recycling tip. Mm -hmm. And I try to do it specific kind of to the guest. And being the group for the East End, you're involved in so much with the environment. I thought I would go pretty broad, but kind of specific. Mm -hmm. And what I thought um, would be a good tip is to have people become basically just more informed about the environment. To get out there, to find out what's going on with their water supply, um, how to keep it safe, what's going on with the beaches and the parks, how to keep them clean and healthy, and now the problem being how to keep them open sure. on Long Island. Yeah. Um, to find out about um, the wastewater and uh, sewage treatment and cesspools and just all the kinds of things that people kind of in the back background of what's going on here to get people a little bit more knowledgeable about that kind of thing. Well, I could, you know, picking up on that, there's, there's two things. I, I moved out here in the early 1980s, so I've been kicking around for a while now. And the two things that I found, whether it was through work or just living out here, that were essential were, one, if you pick up the local newspapers out here, a uh, tremendous amount of the content is environmental content. So it deals with planning and zoning and building and, and sure. coastal erosion issues. And just steeping yourself in that information, you get a couple of things. You find out what the kind of front burner issues are for the community. Mm -hmm. You find out who's involved in those issues. And by going a little bit deeper, you find out how to communicate with those folks, how to, you know, what's going on? Is there a hearing in town hall that I should be attending? Is there an organization like Group for the East End or the Peconic Baykeeper or somebody else that is involved in this who I should sure. pick up the phone or check out their website? Those are all ways to just kind of slide into this. You know, people are, get intimidated by government and what Absolutely. kind of education you have. And I don't know enough to be, you know, everybody can play a role, the more the better. And the other part of this is that uh, we often get, I think, kind of sidetracked of the list of things to do to be an environmentalist. I have to recycle this much and I have to, you know, I always tell people the story about, you know, I drove to work one day and, and I didn't have my recycle, my, my cup that I use for my coffee. So yeah, I turned yeah. around, I, so I turned around and drove back to my house to get my cup, realizing <laughs> after I got there, I probably burned twice as much fuel. I should have just got a paper cup. So, you know, we can get a little sidetracked on that. Sure. What I always find is just spend time outside. You know, we mm -hmm. do less and less of that. And the ability to just go out and whether it's looking up at the stars at night, which, Enjoy. you know, here on the East End, we're still fortunate enough to be able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, walking with your family or your kids or by yourself anywhere, just spending time outside and paying attention. It's like going to Jupiter. It's like a different world. And once you get there, you can, you can write and you can dream and you can think and you can identify things. That's where the core of an environmental ethic really comes sure. from. And it's very easy to live your entire life, even on the east end of Long Island, and not go down to the water and not go into the woods. Everyone's busy. You know, I work in this field, and I, once a week I'm like, you know, have I seen the water this week? Wow. I better really make sure. You know, fortunately I have kids that remind me of this and drag me down there. But it's very easy, and I think, you know, the tip that I always give people is, you know, love it first. Get, get just a feel for it. You don't have to know what everything is. You don't have to identify everything. This way you want to protect it if you have a yeah. connection. You know, to take that feeling and that experience and then start to pick up the paper and go, wait a minute, that's, that's the woods I was just walking in. Right. Or, um, and never underestimate. I think uh, most elected officials will tell you this. The elected officials on the East End, in my experience, and we don't always agree all the time, but one thing I will say is they know that the public input is valuable. And every community that, that we work in, which is all five East End towns, those elected officials value people showing up, right. having the patience to, to look and learn and listen. I think we all get an appreciation for what it means to serve in public office out here. This is not an easy job. Um, and as much as, you know, people consider advocates always, you know, arguing with elected officials, I, mean, I have tremendous respect for anybody who stands for office, gets elected to office, and has to deal with the it's mountain like of issues <laughs> that we now have on the East End. So collectively, those are the things from our standpoint that you know, move you toward a more, environmental, uh, a more environmentally conscious way of thinking. And then you know, it just becomes second nature. You don't have to remember to make sure that we, you know, it just happens. Sure, absolutely. And I know a lot of the work that you're doing, you're involved in so many things as well, whether Trying. it's you know, <laughs> I mean, a lot of things. 
And then it just becomes second nature. So sure. you're doing it. You don't have to think about it so much. Right. And, you know, um, like you said, uh, the local newspapers, also radio. You've got a nice radio program. Yeah, uh, we're on, Fridays. Uh, on Peconic Public Broadcasting. Yes. I was very fortunate last year uh, with um, 88.3, which is the FM Peconic Public Broadcasting. Bonnie Grice, who's outstanding, I mean, as I said to you before, you know, carried me through the first year of that program. <laughs> um, we had a number of really terrific shows. We got a number of awards for that program. I had never done radio before. It was great to have people in the community coming in as panelists, and we talked to a lot of different people from government, from outside government, people working on conservation issues. And you had people call We in. had call-ins, you know, great. people with all kinds <laughs> of issues, and it gets you thinking. You know, mm -hmm. I left there every morning wondering uh, about more things than I had when I came in, because people raised really good questions, and I think the, the confluence of, you know, uh, public access television, public radio, these things are sure. part of the East End uh, dialogue, part of our narrative, and it's very important, whether it's, you know, a program like this or whether it's a public program on on radio, that we keep that dialogue going. It's a complicated place, you and know. And there's a lot of people that do care, and uh, this kind of format and this forum can... Uh... Yeah, and the region is changing, and we've we've had a lot of amazing things happen in conservation, you know, for the last decade or so. We, we've saved almost 10,000 acres of land through the Community Preservation Fund. Five East End towns making a commitment to buy open space and the protect most it for in the New York future. State. It's, it's state an exceptional program. And even last year, um, even the town of East Hampton uh, raised $10 million last year in the off economy. The town of Southampton raised almost $20 million out of that fund. That's great. So that's money for the future. But at the same time, you know, there's 15,000 new units of, of development here now that weren't here 10, 10 years ago. Sure. We've got uh, 40 or 50 million more vehicle trips a year than we had 10 years ago. We're using about one and a half billion gallons of water that we didn't use 10 years ago. So as an organization, we're starting to look at, okay, now that we're all here. There's a carrying capacity and we have to make sure we don't. <laughs> and yeah, and, and we used to, you know, when I first started, I've been with the group now uh, 17 going on 18 years. And before that, I was working in conservation for Suffolk County with the Office of Ecology there on the Peconic Estuary Program and other things. And, you know, what we've seen is back when I started, we were looking at large tracts of land and how do we do our best to protect those tracts of land for the future and how do we manage the development that we had at that time. And now what we're looking at is an increasingly shrinking pie of undeveloped or available land. And the land around us is largely filled with us. So mm -hmm. what's happening to the runoff? What's happening to the sewage? What's going down the drain? How are we managing our, the four corners of our own property? And so this is what uh, the group for the ASCEND is, is involved in, in all these type of issues. One of the things that we're focusing on, now we also, you know, we kind of operate, I guess, at, at, at two different levels. And one you might say is, you know, at 20,000 feet, and the other one is right down on the ground. The 20,000 foot level is the issue of what's the best plan that we can put in place for the communities that we're working in. Right now in the town of Southhold, they're about to undertake a major comprehensive planning effort, not unlike that was done in East Hampton several years mm -hmm. back. We're trying to become involved there, educate people about what that means, how that shapes the future of the community. We're also looking at programs like the Peconic Estuary, which are regional conservation programs. Our office is involved the in- The Long Island Sound. Right, Long program. Island Sound study. Yeah. So we're involved in those larger regional programs that are setting conservation goals for the next five or 10 years. That's good. But we're also working right down at the ground level in terms of looking at the four corners of our property and saying, okay, um, what am I planting on my lawn? How much lawn do I need? You know, if you, uh, I saw this uh, analysis done, you can actually go online, I think the EPA has this, that there is enough managed turf on the United States to fill up the entire state of Pennsylvania. So that's I'm how sure. much, and, and you know, all those, all that mowing and yeah. all these different things that we just kind of do. All those chemicals and fertilizers right. and pesticides, another good tip would be for people to cut down on those and, and take an alternative product if, well, they, ha if they have to use one it. One of the projects that we worked on, and I know that you had the Peconic Baykeeper on mm -hmm. at one of your shows, and, and we worked closely with Kevin on, on a variety of things. This is a, a, a little brochure that we put out for people, and it, um, it, it's about, it's called basecaping, and, and what we really hope to do is to give people some advice about the kinds of plants that you can use on your property that don't require a lot of fertilizer, that don't That's require great. a lot of water. Native species. Native species that, that blend in with the ha natural habitat that mm -hmm. you may have, and, and this is something which is pretty easy to do, and what I have found is, and believe me, I'm no great landscaper, is um, the native plants are often less expensive. The, uh, the Sometimes deer resistant. I was going to say, those, those people who have watched deer clean out whatever it is that they planted. Yes, the um, rose bushes. Yeah, and so what we did here is, is we tried to give people some gar this not is great. gardening tips. This is really good. And also, um, you know, some ideas for how they might they might landscape so they their can properties. get this by? They can come to our website, which okay. is uh, www.groupfortheeastend.org or eastendenvironment.org. Either one will get you there. And, You've uh, got a, a whole bunch of we nice do. We, we, 